and we are live. Good evening, folks. How the devil are you? We hope you're well. Uh, this evening, we are jo joined by my co-host, Lorian, who will be manning the chat as normal. And we have the lovely Barry John with us. Thank you for joining us, Barry. Uh, we really do appreciate you. We've been you're looking welcome. forward to this one. Um, this evening, we're going to be talking about, uh, we've just kind of been discussing it. We, we're going to be talking about the good and bad points of mediumship, um, talking about Barry's career. And Barry has actually uh, agreed uh for us to give two of, two of our lucky viewers a reading. Um, we actually put a post out yesterday onto Facebook and we kind of shared it around on our profiles and stuff. The first two people that got in contact with us are the people that will be receiving the readings this evening. Uh, they will be pulled up on video later. Um, uh, Barry, if, if that's all right, if that's the way you want to do it. Absolutely fine. Yeah, I have no problem with that at all. I mean, we always keep them very short and sharp when they're on screen anyway. Yeah, um, and the one thing I just want to say is I don't know who these two people are at all. I've, I've not had any names. I've not been given any details, um, just so that everybody's aware of that. Yeah, nothing at all. Um, so I'll, I'll sign anything away to that to, to testify that. Uh -huh. So. This isn't to catch anybody out. This isn't to do anything. Uh, we are here purely as we are every other week to give people a voice um, from their side of the paranormal to share it without drama, without arguments, and for their voice to be heard. Hence, we're called the Ghost Voice. Um, so we're going to start off. Barry, can you tell us who you are and what you do, please? I'm sure most <laughs> people know who you are if they are here. Oh, this is what I've said a million times, but I will do. Not a problem. I mean, you know, what do people want to know about me? I mean, that's why I always start out, because I've been in the industry now for, what, over 30, 35 years, the last 20 years for me. And it seems like yesterday I've been in the media, the public eye, magazines, columnists, writer, you name it, you know, getting all over, all over the globe, really. And I've traveled a lot, you know, over the last sort of 20 years. I've traveled over to Australia, the Middle East, um, South America, America, Europe on a regular basis, which for me gives me, um, I want to say, an element of credibility where people are asking me to go to these places. It's not just somebody contacting me out of the blue. You know, yeah. people go, oh, we've heard about you. You know, would you come and do us a talk? Would you come and do us a demonstration? Would you come and do us some readings? Um, and the one thing I've always, always said is, I don't do any of this for me. I do it for the public. You know, I do it because I want to um, help people. I want people to move on in life. And, you know, I always think that to be a very, very good medium, you've got to have experienced love, loss. You've got to have experienced all that pain in your life. And this is the one thing. Yeah, I always say this, James, people, that, you know, I've been through with that. I've, I've lost people extremely, extremely close. I mean, even up until a couple of weeks ago, I've just lost another lady who was very, very dear to me. Um, and, you know, I, I always try and do this for the benefit of others, not for me, you know, and I hope I hope I never come across with an egotistical attitude to anybody, you know, and if I do, I apologize, because that certainly isn't me. Um, but, you know, I mean, my, my route has taken me many directions. Um, it's taken me through, you know, uh, training as a medium, training people as mediums, working with very good named mediums in the market, and we'll talk about some of them in a bit as well. Yeah, um, sure. But also, you know, when I go on to TV in any sort of aspect, whatever it is, I've done it to try and demonstrate to people that actually we're an element of professional people out there. And the way that we want to come across is professional. Um, and I think that brings us on to something, hopefully what we can pick up in the subject a little bit later on, is about that element of training, about responsibility of people, um, paranormal groups, etc. cetera. Um, and it's one of the things that I, I love to talk about because... I just think that we all need to be very, very professional. So, you know, I was lucky. I came from a very, a very long line of mediums. You know, my mother's side specifically, where they used to do a lot of physical mediumship, table levitation, things like that, apporting objects, you name it. Um, and, you know, people forget that mediumship goes a lot further than just reading somebody or reading a few cards for somebody. It does. So I hope that gives it you in a nutshell. <laughs> um, that's the interview finished. We'll see you next week. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, one, one of the things I've always I've always tried to do. I mean, I come from a very professional career anyway. Yeah, um, I have my own companies still, and you know, I still uh, I still am a normal person. Let me say that to people. You oh, know, yeah. mediumship takes up a lot of my time, but I'll always, always, always make room to uh, where I can support charities, etc. And I do that on a regular basis. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. So you, you kind of hit on it. Mediumship uh, or mediums are real people. A lot of people think they all sit on, you know, a clay doing, you know, 
some kind of Ganesh stance of <laughs> meditating, or a Buddha stance, meditating all the time. But you're not. You have we, we you have real lives. Mm. You've got real families. You have real arguments. You have real love for people, and it encompasses all that to become a medium. But also, when you do a mediumship and you're given readings, there's an element of counselling there. So mm. I think you need to have experienced life to be able to to offer a reading or, or a do, message or you know do you know that is a lovely lovely way to say it jane and one of the things i always say to people is there's a very fine line between a medium be, between being a medium and a counselor because i've had people who've come to me and said oh, i want to read it and when i start talking to them i think you don't need a reading you want more you want you want somebody to actually help you grieve and let's yeah. be honest, a lot of our process nowadays as mediums is helping people grieve. It's helping them let go. I mean, I, I, I can't even imagine how many readings I've done for people when the first thing they come in and say to me is, I just wanted to say goodbye. I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. And when you can give somebody that opportunity to go, actually, you can say it now. You know, you've done it. You've said your goodbyes. You almost see this massive look of relief on people's faces um, and, you know, this moves me into another aspect where I, I do a lot of work with, with terminal illnesses, uh, et cetera, where I support families when they are losing loved ones, when they're going to me, well, what happens? Where do they go? You know, can I let them go? How do I tell them to go? And it's a very, very hard thing. And, and I mean, I had to do this with my own mum and, and basically say to her, look, you know, it's time to go now. You know, if you want to leave, that's fine. And my comment to her was, I don't know how I'll survive without a mum. But, you know, the look of relief on her face was tremendous. And that was 18 years ago for me, you know, and that was really when I thought, you know, it, it gave me a bit of an awakening, a wake up feeling inside where I thought, you know what, I've got to do this to help other people now. And that's when I really I started pushing the media side of it a bit more and going, I want to be genuine, you know, and I think that's the one thing you've got to be is genuine because people see us out there in the market. And the first comment people always come up to me and, and say to me is, Oh God, aren't you aren't you approachable? Now, bearing in mind, I'm six foot five. Okay, so I'm not a small guy. Um, and people, because they see you on TV, they think that you're somebody who they almost can't come to. You know, oh, I can't I can't go and talk to him. But the, that's the one thing I've always encouraged. I want people to talk to me. I get some fantastic emails from people, and people who over the years I've done readings for, who have become very very good friends to me as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Um... We'll, we'll kind of go back into the readings before we do the ones in a minute. Right. Let's just kind of sit on the paranormal side at the moment. What do you do as a as a medium in a paranormal in investigation? I mean, do you do um, do you do rescue? Do you just go in to, to give, you know, what what you're seeing, what you're feeling? I suppose it's it's a difficult one because for me it depends on the venue first of all it depends what I feel. You know, I've I've been some amazing buildings where people go, it's really haunted here, and I go inside and think never picked a damn thing up here before you know and i probably never will and i always tell a great story of a lady who i rang up a very very well-known location i'm not going to name it but many years ago and i said to this lady on the end of the phone um i'd like to book and she thought i wanted to book a room basically and i said no i want to book the whole building she says well why i said because i want to bring a, a paranormal group and this lady turned around to me and she says and this was her comment. I'm not just saying this is in a Yorkshire accent. Yeah. She said, love, I have worked here for 45 years and I have never seen a damn thing. OK, <laughs> now that to me says a lot. OK, mm. that to me says a lot. But really, it depends what people want from it. You know, I mean, I don't believe that spirit need rescuing. I think very often spirit are there because they want to be in visitation or they've been called in some sort of way. I think if we went into every building and said, oh, we've got to rescue every spirit, you know, put it this way. I certainly wouldn't be happy if somebody said that said that to me that they were going to rescue my mum. You know, I would say, actually, no, she doesn't need to be rescued because she's oh, here yeah. at a choice. But, you know, a lot of it, what people want when I go on a paranormal investigation is they want to follow me. And what they want me to do is pick something up and then they go around with a, with a K2 or an EMF or a REM pod, whatever they've got. And actually go, right, let's see if we can depict something here. Let's see what we can find. And, you know, if you get that activity in tandem where I'm going, right, I've got I've got an energy, I've got something, and then somebody's K2 is going off or whatever. Somebody's going, yeah, I can feel it's getting colder. That's what people want. They want that experience. And 
And I do think for me, a lot of it is going back to the basics of ghost hunting, as we call it, you know, the paranormal. You know, we've got some great equipment out there. But remember, the best tool <clears throat> is us. Yeah. yeah, it is. When, when people go into a location and there's already um, suggested hauntings in there, do you think that a lot of what they feel may be, um, well, maybe suggested feelings, thoughts? Mm. Um, you know, are, are they experiencing something in, psychologically rather than mediumistically? I, th I think you're absolutely spot on. And I think what people do is they pre-investigate a lot of buildings. And I mean, it's one of the things I've always been very honest about. Even when I film shows, I always say, I don't want to know where I'm going. I don't want any information about it. All I want to do is turn up. So normally you get collected or I get picked up from somewhere. But, you know, I don't want to know any information because that actually spoils it for me. You know, I'm going in there, not only for the public, but for me, I want to go in and go, actually, you know what, I am picking up something up here. And I would sooner yeah. somebody then work alongside me to say, right, we'll take that information away and we'll come back to you and just confirm it or nod or go, yeah, that makes sense. Um, rather than people pre-investigating it. And that's what I like to call it, the pre-investigation space. But, you know, the one thing I'll point out to people is remember on a lot of these websites, a lot of the stories that they put on are actually made up. They're not actually real stories because let's be honest, mm -hmm. If I said to you, go and look at this building, there's nothing happened here for 100 years, people would go, well, I'm not going there then. What a waste of time. Exactly. I, went to a, I went to a very, very well-known um, poltergeist location last year. I was filming it with the BBC. And I have to say, I was totally, totally disappointed. Totally disappointed because we didn't get a lot of activity at all. Certainly nothing in terms of what people were saying to me about things flying around and... And I'm thinking, hang on a minute here. You know, I've worked in this field for a very, very long time. If spirit are going to want to do something, come on, guys, let's have a go. You know, let's see what's going to happen. But yeah. I was disappointed. I really was. And that was from stories what, what people had told me going, oh, well, this happened, that happened. You've just got to go in there. And, and I always call it naked. And I don't mean take all your clothes off, by the way. I just mean you've got to go in there. <laughs> you've got to go in there naked and think whatever I pick up, I pick up, simple as. And remember that energy moves. You know, you might get one room that's very active. The next minute it might be flat because they've moved to the next room. They might follow you around. And you've got to be mindful of this. So I, I've always tried to give public the opportunity to work with me on an event. You know, I'll always do a little bit of what I call a mini workshop or something where I'm going, right, everybody stand still, what are you feeling, what are you getting? And it's not me not doing my job. It's me trying to make them go, actually, you know what, I can feel something. I know there's something here, even to the point of doing um, lone vigils and making people do lone vigils, which I hate, by the way. Two rules about me, I'm, I'm scared of the dark. And the second one is, if a door's closed, it's closed for a reason. Um, <laughs> and I always believe that, you know, and, and anybody who knows me in the chat room will know that I, no disrespect to you two lovely ladies, I always welcome a lady to go through first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, why, why, why send a man to do a woman's job? That's a thing. <laughs> so, I so, like go, that. <laughs> so, so going back to um, hmm. sort of like places in, in spirits going into, into places, um, in, in suggestion, the, the power of suggestion, look at the skirried in where people think that Judge Jeffries was there. Mm. It's written in history that he wasn't there. It's just, I don't know how, the, how it all come about. I don't know the history of that. I can't say it, but I do know that he he didn't stay there or convict, as it said. Mm. So that's that's a really interesting one. Yeah, groups go in and they're still finding Judge Jeffries. They're still feeling him. Well, not feeling. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I know. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, and and you know, I I I, I loved the Skiridin. I've got to tell you that I've oh, had some amazing, place. amazing experiences Incredible at place. the Skiridin. Yeah. Even upstairs in the bedrooms when, at the end of the night, they said to us, oh, you can stay if you want. And I said, no, thanks, I'll drive home. Um, but, you know, I've got to say, but this is that preconception again, what people go with, those preconceived ideas <clears throat> where they might have read something and thought, oh, hang on a minute, that fits very well. And, you know, again, repeating what I said a few minutes ago, if you sat and watched a certain television show and nothing happened at all from a paranormal perspective, would you sit and watch it the following week? No, you wouldn't. You'd turn around and go, well, nothing happened last week, so I'm not going to watch it again this week. Um, but I think this is where people almost make their own history up at times. And we've got to be careful with this because, you know, history is very factual. Um, I used to work with, well, I knew a medium. I won't say worked. I knew a medium that every building you went into had a demonic monk. 
which I used to say, well, that's a bit of a contradiction of terms there because uh -huh. you're talking of two total, total different entities for a start or characters. And, and I don't see how it could work, simple as. So I think sometimes people do it to almost big things up. Um, and we've all seen it. We've all seen it on events where um, somebody wants attention. Sorry to put yeah. it like that. <laughs> yeah, it, no, it, it does. I, it does. Um, I totally get what you're saying. And if things are fabricated, they stay there. That's the problem. Because they do. Yes, it's such a problem. Um, Through the Veil says, I've had a spirit give a total different story of a place than what people say. You're, you're exp Ab you experience absolutely, absolutely perfect. Yeah, I mean, that's, do you know what, Jane? That's exactly what we're talking about. You know, go in there make up your own, inter no, don't, not make up, that's the wrong way to say it, but get your own interpretation of what you feel, not what I feel, not what anybody else feels. You know, just because I'm picking up a gentleman in a room doesn't mean to say somebody else won't pick up a female in a room, you know, because we all work on different vibrations and different levels. And I think it is a matter of that, um, that personal side. You know, you've got to have that personal experience. You know, I could stand in a room all day and go, I've got a lady, I've got a man, I've got a child, I've got a dog, I've got, you know, I've got somebody's budgie, whatever it is. But that's not proving anything to anybody, okay? Yeah. This is why people have got to go in and go, actually, what am I picking up? You know, and that's what I try and help them do on any event is just to open up a little bit. Yeah, that's really good. So mm -hmm. before we go any further, I do apologise, folks. I never did the shout outs at the beginning. I'll give a few now. And there is someone asking about questions, if we can ask questions. We'll take sure. questions for Barry within the last probably 10 minutes and cover those subjects because there's a lot I want to get through in this hour. Um, so we have Afterlife Journey, and thank you for joining us. I see you're new. Uh, Jem, who is one of our mods, thank you for joining Through the Veil. Baza. Uh, we have Lynn. Uh, Kaz Kazma, Dottie, Karen, thank you for joining. Everyone that's in, we do appreciate you being here. Please do share this far and wide so we can get some more pub pub publicity for, uh, <laughs> for, for Barry. Um, he's an amazing guy and it would oh, be bless. lovely if we can get this out there. Um, so, um, going back to mediumship, there's mm. a lot of bad stuff within mediumship. You've got your genuine mediums and then you've got your, your mediums that are not genuine, that are just code reading they could be picking stuff out off of a off of a, a pre-written sheet almost um or they are um they're, they're sending uh what's the word solicited emails to vulnerable people you know there's people popping up on on facebook and twitter and wherever yeah. all the time calling themselves mediums now mm. what are your thoughts on that I think I think certainly over these over this last year, let's call it that, over the whole COVID period, people suddenly have seen this as a bit of a very quick money making entity. Um, but even before that, let's be honest, guys, you know, people were doing this. You know, they, they used to go to one workshop and then suddenly they'd start working with tarot cards or giving readings. And you know, I hear this constantly from people where they go, "Oh, I went down the road and I paid ten pound for a reading. And it wasn't very good." Well. Did you know who they were, first of all? I mean, I get a lot of my readings on recommendation or clients on recommendation. Um, and you know what? That's all I want, you know. But I think you're yeah, absolutely spot on. I think people nowadays, they're not prepared to put in the time to train. They're not prepared to work with somebody who's done it because, again, it's always this, well, I know more than what they do. Um, and I think, you know, I will give up my time for anybody. I always have done. You know, I know a lot of people will contact me with a question and I always make time to answer it. You might not get it straight away but I'll always try and answer you honestly and truthfully. Um, yeah. But I think people see it as a quick a quick way to make money nowadays. Um, the market has got a lot, lot more difficult over the years. Um, a lot of the venues now that we've contacted won't be doing mediumship nights anymore because they're basically just flooded with them. And all it takes is one bad experience and that's it. They just cut them out. And that's quite frustrating in a way because, you know, what we've all tried to do professionally is portray the whole industry on a professional basis. So I think you're always going to get it. I don't think we'll ever clamp it out. You know, it's no different to paranormal groups that are cropping up left, right and centre. Mm -hmm. You know, no insurance going into people's homes, not looking at people's proper sort of medical states, medical conditions, mental health states. And, you know, the, I get some horrendous stories where groups have been into properties and people have contacted me and, told, and said, Oh, they've told me I've got a dark entity and I've got to live with it. 
Um, well, imagine what that's doing to an individual that's probably not in a not in a right frame of mind, you know. And I'm talking about maybe somebody who's in depression there, somebody who's a bit down down in the dumps. You know, you're leaving them with this real quite harsh idea, you know, of something's basically haunting their home. And you've got to be mindful about this because people remember it, you know, and I don't want that to be what our industry is about, you know. So my advice to anybody is, you know, go out there, find a reputable medium, get trained properly. Doesn't have to be one of the big societies out there. Somebody that you know you can trust, somebody you think, actually, you know what, I can relate to this person and I understand how they teach. I work with a lot of fun. I always have done because that's how I work as a medium. But I think if you can make things fun for people, they remember it better. Um, yeah. And I still run on, you know, over this period, we've done um, online workshops, we've done Zoom workshops, um, we've been doing readings over the phone. We've always tried to keep up this sort of input for people to move them forward. But I think you'll always find in the industry, people think it's just so, so easy. And they mm. will continue to do it. And, you know, I work for a, a very well-known um, TV psychic channel. Um, we've got a lot of other people out there that are doing the same thing. The one thing that I really, really don't like, and I have to say this very, very honestly, um, I don't like where people bombard individuals with all these messages. And I've had them, you know, where they go, oh, we've got, we've got, a, late, we've got a mother figure in the spirit world. She's dying, you know, wanting to talk to you. She's got, you know, you've got to get in touch with us. And I think that's really preying on the vulnerable you know, you shouldn't do that. You know, people, as I always say to anybody, people have a choice whether they come and see me. They, they make up their own mind. I don't turn around and go, right, everybody who's seen me, you've all got to have a reading with me. No, you, ca you can't ask any questions. You've just got to have a reading with me. Um, and I think that's where it gets very frustrated. And we've seen this over the last sort of 12 <clears throat> months where it's got a lot harder in the market and people are trying every sort of eventuality to try and drum up more sort of readings really from it. And I don't know whether it's the right way to do it sometimes because as I say, I don't think we should pry on on vulnerable people. I, I think as well, like you say, the people who are coming for a reading quite often are very grieved um, mm. or grieving, I should say, and they yeah. are more vulnerable. So they will cling on to anything, whether they they're probably not in the same mindset as maybe we would be right now, where we would question something that, you know, not you, but a medium would be yeah. saying to us. Whereas when you're in that deep, upset and anxiety you just you welcome anything don't you so you, you do and and also you get that bunch of people lauren who um want to um basically what they want to do is live their life by your reading and mm -hmm. you can give a reading to somebody to you know i could have done a reading today for somebody and then they could come back next week they'll come back the week after they'll come back the week after and i won't do that i tell them no simple as because i'm not here to live your life for you I'm here to look at a circumstance in your life that you yeah. need either an element of support or help with or guidance, simple as. But don't expect me to get involved in your divorce case and tell you how um, it's going to end because that's not down to me to direct that. That's down to you to direct it. It is. Yeah. People talk about fate and living by fate, but this this was kind of a famous line in one of the, the box sets that I watch. You know, he said... He, Ragnar in Vikings, he said, you call it fate to the seer. He said, you call it fate, but you told us everything that was going to happen. How mm. is it fate when you've decided the future for us? And that's that's a very true line. Um, it, it, it's a very difficult one because as I always say to anybody who comes in, you know, comes to a, for a reading with me, I would say I could tell you whatever you want to know at this moment in time. I could tell you to walk out my door and turn left. If you turn right, basically you've changed the whole of that reading instantly within a second. Um, yeah. But that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to direct people into um, what route they should be taking. You know, if the spirit world wants to give me a message and go, by the way, Jane, you know, in August, you're going to get some good news. Great. That's fantastic. Uh -huh. But what I don't want them to come in and going, oh, by the way, you know, in August on this date, this date, and this is going to happen and that's going to happen because that's unfair on you. Um, yeah. Because if it doesn't happen, you know, you could be quite upset. But also it might make you change the way your life path is so that you hit those targets if that makes sense yeah it does i totally agree with that totally agree with that um i want to pick this up about how people should approach a medium to have a reading after we've done mm. these mini readings if that's all right um lorian if you could sort the other ladies come on we have the first lady on this evening who is penny who was our very first person to say <laughs> me um so we have penny on who's who, who we're going to do a reading for i believe you know her 
I know Penny very well. Yeah, she's she's a darling. She really is a darling. I love her with all my life. I really do. This, this one might be a bit more difficult then, but we'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll put you two up and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go quiet and we'll let you two do what you've got to do for... We've set sort of like five minutes for each reading maximum. Yeah, that's fine. All right? That's fine. Cool. Yeah, that's all right. fine. Okay. Good evening, Penny. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you, my darling. You're only being nice to me, Barry, because you know I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I know the truth, young man. <laughs> I know. You know this lady. I'm going to tell you this. This lady made me stand on about five steps lower down, so that we both ended up being on the same level when she was interviewing me. <laughs> it's true. And, and, and I, d I did it for her as well. He did. <laughs> he did. Yes. Or you could I say stand five steps up so that we were the oh. same whichever way you look at it but otherwise i couldn't get us both in the camera to do the interviews <laughs> i have the same when we take from my paranormal team when we do um when we take photos because i'm six foot and most of my team are like five foot five and shorter so yeah i'm, you know, I'm five I'm, foot two jane i'm <laughs> five foot two I'm as tall as I am wide, so it's it's um <laughs> you know, it's, it's like I stand behind everybody normally, so I can hide the, 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 the mask. But you know they're all up on these steps, you know. So right, I'm anyway. feeling dinky because I know I know how tall Lorian is. Obviously, I know how tall Barry is. I just feel like the little dinky person now talking to you. Yeah. Oh, all good things yeah. calling come in small packages, though, Penny. Don't forget that. That's what my husband says. There you go. Chocolate. Think of that. Chocolate comes in small packages. You were thinking what I was thinking, Penny. <laughs> right. Okay. We're going to go with this. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, then. Let's yeah. go with this. Let's see where we're going to end up. Okay. Now, obviously, guys, I do know Penny, but I didn't know she was coming on. I need to say that, okay, to everybody. Now, the one thing with you, Penny, <clears throat> you love for life, okay? You, you, if you, if you meet somebody, you love them for life. But woe betide anybody who crosses your path, okay? You really are on that sort of verge where you'll go, "I'll give you a chance," but that's it. You get one chance with me. You cut me, and that's it. I cut you dead. Simple as, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I know that there's a gentleman in the spirit world comes through. And he must have gone over either with a lung problem or a lung cancer problem here as I'm talking to him, okay? Um, okay. He was very direct. I know that I'm a father link, but I have to be honest, I feel like I want to move over to your, your partner's side of the family, not necessarily your side of the family with this, okay? okay? But I know that there's a chest problem there. It feels like a lung issue, sorry, by the way, a lung problem, okay? But I know I get this fatherly link. Um, now, with you, I, I do feel that as I'm saying this, you try and, um, okay, you try and hold things back when you don't want to say it. In other words, you wouldn't intentionally hurt somebody or upset them. But there is times I want to say to you, especially at the moment, if it needs to be said, say it, okay? Because I know this is what I'm telling you to say. Say it. Just say it. I keep seeing the month of April being very significant as well, either a birthday or anniversary month. Um, need to give you, I would love to give you somewhere like Cyprus, okay? I want to give you either give you Cyprus or Malta as a strong link or a strong connection. You're very much a water baby. Now, I don't know what star sign you are or anything, but I know that I've got this lovely water link there with you. Um, as I said, put your toe in the water, you'll go for it. In other words, if you get any opportunity, it's like, I'm going to go for this. I'm going to take it, okay? And I know with you, you, are, you should be either writing another book or you should be in the process of putting it together because I don't know why I want to say this. I think you're going to get approached by a publishing house very soon that is going to snap you up in a wink, okay? I need to talk to you about probably moving you into June, maybe even July. I'm happy with June, okay? But I feel like you're getting snapped up. And I've got to say this, I keep seeing the, the initials of HH, and I know I want to say to you, hey, house, okay? So I've got a feeling, darling, you're going to get a bit of a shock, but in a very good way here, okay, to move forward. Now, as I'm talking to you, sorry, guys, I know I'll probably go over five minutes, but that's what happens. Okay. Um, I want to roll a cigarette for you. There's a man here coming in who's rolling cigarettes as I'm talking to him, okay? okay. And as he's doing it, he's, you know how they used to lick the length of them? Mm -hmm. I want to do this, but I'm doing it almost like a, like a harmonica, I want to say to you, you know, as though I'm playing a tune in a way. But he would have done this, and he's rolling it up, and he's saying, 
if you're ever unsure about things, just sit and think about it, first of all. Almost like I want to say to you, um, engage brain before mouth, okay, mm -hmm. in a very professional way. I know you're going to slap me when you see me for that one. Um, <laughs> well, you're bringing I, the box for me to stand on so that I can. I will do. I, in fact, <laughs> yeah. I'll, hold you, I'll hold you up. Don't worry about it. All right. But I just want to say to you, darling, every cloud has a silver lining, especially in terms of relationships with you, okay? Because I know wherever you are at the moment, your partner adores the ground that you walk on, okay? But my God, do you rule it with an iron fist. I could almost put you as the next Margaret Thatcher, okay? <laughs> the iron lady, because I just think with you, you know what? Yeah, I'll be very nice, but God, if I want to say something or I've got a rule to make, I'll make it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I've got to give you the name of Henry in the spirit world, what I keep hearing shouted through, Okay. And and I would love to talk. <laughs> See, I know I know what Penny does. This is what this is what gets hard because I need to talk to you of um, almost like the roundhead connection. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of rounded headed round headed helmets here as I'm talking to you. So I want to. Okay. I keep seeing this real sort of royalist battle here, and I know that you have this fascination over wars and looking into delving into wars and history. Yeah. But there's a real fascination here of the round heads and, and that sort of link for me, okay? Because yeah. I just keep seeing it behind you as I'm chatting to you at the moment. Um, I have to give you this because I'm feeling it. I, I want to say, have you got a problem with one of your ankles, please? My ankle hurts me all of a sudden. Sorry. I, I broke it about two years ago and it's still right. not right, yeah. Okay, because I've got this pain in my ankle all of a sudden. I'm going to give you August as well, but August is a birthday or anniversary month at the same time for me, okay? Um, and I want to go somewhere around the 6th, 7th, the earlier part of August for me, as I'm looking at this, okay? Um, I, I want to give you the name of Pat or Patricia as well that I'm talking about at the moment. Just got this connection coming in over the other side, by the way, okay? Gone, dead and buried. Um, and there's a dot or a Dorothy over the other side as well being shouted in. All right. Um, darling, I have to say to you, when you go deep into thought, do you have some sort of chain here that you... You either twist it or you hold it. I feel like I want to put a pendant in my hand here as though I'm just going, it's like my look, it's like my good luck charm. Okay. It helps me focus. If I wear a necklace, right. yes, I stroke the right. jewel on to focus. Good. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I know I've said to you, I think you should be writing another book, but darling, I'm going to say to you, there's a lot of vocal work coming up for you. You need to be doing either more talking or you'll be invited to do more talks. Okay. Because all I look at, when I look at you, I see this blue energy around your throat, and I know that's professional speaking. All right, there okay. you go. Is that all right oh. for you, my sweetheart? You're very uh, welcome. Yeah, Dorothy is my grandmother, who okay. I have had quite a few people say they have described her to a T standing behind me when I start talking publicly. That's why my mm. you said it. <laughs> there you go. Um, then she's obviously behind you. Yeah. So that, that was why I went, ooh. Um, yeah, no, that's interesting. Thank you. I get a lovely lovely link. I don't know why, but all the time to like, almost like War of the Roses. I could talk to you about all of this sort of link. <laughs> War of the Roses. You know, I, I just get this real strong link all the time as I talk to you about this. Well, Wars of the Roses could be the fact my dad's from Yorkshire. My mum's from Lancashire. Right, so okay. I've always had that, the Wars of the Roses in my head. But... Mm. Yeah, the historical link, the roundheads, I've never really looked into them. That's never been a sort of part of history that I've mm. focused on. So that, but yeah, Dorothy, that, that, that was weird that you picked up the name. Actually, there's two dots. There's a dot and a Dorothy. In right. Okay. I know I wanted to say dot or Dorothy to you as yeah, well. Yeah, no, the Dorothy oh, is my no, grandmother no. And, and people have actually described her standing behind me when I've done podcast, um, like this sort of thing before. So no, thank you, Barry. No, my pleasure, my darling. You know that anytime. In August. Have you mentioned it? Oh, no, you will see me in August. Yes. I will. Yes. Yes. I've not mentioned it yet. You haven't, have you? We'll, we'll do that towards the end. Right. Right. I'm not going to be here, so I just want to say I'll be seeing you in August, young man. All right, my darling. Give us some of girls. And Bye. Bye. Having us. And Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye. I'll, I'll pick you up now, Bye, right? darling. Bye.
Okay, Aww. before we go on, I just want to address a comment um, from Paranormal Chasers. Thank you so much for coming, and we do appreciate it. We do appreciate the honesty. Since mm-hmm. I'm not sure how the readings will pan out, as I saw Jane put in a status earlier, uh, for people to comment if they wanted a reading, so the gentleman could have easily checked out people's Facebook profiles. That is very true. Um, I don't think Barry knew we were putting the status up for one, but two, some people actually inboxed us, so not everybody was on the statuses. Um, in fact, we had far more inboxes than what we did people uh, publicly ask for a reading. So we've yeah. kind of picked away from that, uh, if we can. One was, Penny was, was one of the statuses up there. As as you just seen, he knew Penny. We didn't know he knew Penny in the first instance, but Barry has no idea of who he's reading or, or why he's reading or, or whatever. Well, not why he's reading, but uh, we know why he's reading. But, you know, I don't know if you want to add anything into that, well, Barry. Well, what we'll do, I mean, at the end, I mean, I'm more than happy at the end if we get time. We'll just pick some random names out of the listeners or, or who's watching and we'll just do them a quick sort of card reading, really, or something. Right. Um, okay. Because, again, I, I, I've always said I don't want to pick people, so I will let you pick who you want and we'll take it from there. And then that shows people that... Um, you know, we're not delving into it. But honestly, I mean, I was as shocked. I was shocked then when you said Penny because I thought, <laughs> this is just oh, bizarre. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, yeah. Uh, we, we, I didn't know you knew Penny, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And as Jem says, being sceptical is always the best way, in my opinion, power on all mm. chooses. It is the very way. Um, so before we delve into the next one, we do have the lovely Karen waiting to come on. Um, I do want to say that if you are having a reading from a medium, there are some basic rules, and these were kind of taught to me, I think, by Billy and the person who was, who was helping me kind of advance myself, was never feed a medium. If you're doing a reading and the medium's asking you too many questions, you're probably better off not paying your money and walking away, mm, in my opinion. Agree with that. Um, always go with recommendation through word of mouth, from friends, through perhaps local spiritual groups you know, always go through recommendations. If you see an ad in a paper or somebody contact you via email, says, I do readings, please come to me, don't. It's it's probably mm. not the best idea. It's always better to have somebody that you know that's been there before you. Um, that would be my two main... I, I, um, I, I totally agree, Jane, and I just want to add something on there. I mean, at the moment, we're getting a lot of our profiles cloned um, yes. where people are then contacting people and they're going, oh, we've had a friend request. No, they're not from me, okay? They are not from me. And this is what's happening to a lot of mediums now. Their accounts are being cloned, normally by people from overseas, and they'll ping you a message. But please, please, please do not give any money because as soon as you give the money, they'll block you. Yeah. yeah. I had a friend of mine in Lawman, and I was already friends with him, so I was like, is this you? He said, yeah, yeah, it is. He'd, he'd set up a new account, but... Just check if you're not sure. Mm. Uh, a friend of mine had one the, um, only a few weeks ago, and they asked. They they had like a, some bot where it kept sending me messages saying, "Do you want a reading yet? Do you want a reading yet?" And, and stuff like this. And it was it was ridiculous, absolutely yeah. nuts. And I was like, "Well, you don't want to know what I said, but I did say it anyway." Just <laughs> yeah. saying it off of, on YouTube, I might get kicked off. Oh bless you. Um, <laughs> would you like to hear the next one, now, Barry? Absolutely fine. Yeah, let's go for it. I mean, I have no idea who Karen is. I have, again, I'll say this hand on heart. I've no idea. And if she comes up and I recognise her, I will tell you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's let's put her up. Here we go. Hello. Hi, Hi Karen. Thank you for joining Hello. us. No, I don't know you very at all. Good. I'm, I can say Sorry. the same, and I mean that in a very loving way as well. Yeah, um, you know, but um, but yeah, no, you're very welcome. Well, let's have a look. Let's have Thank a look you. at doing a reading for you now. I, j- I just go with it, Karen. I'll tell you that yeah. now, okay? And um, people can see I'm shuffling cards, but a lot of the time I don't use them. I'll tell you that now, okay? Yeah. It's just how I work as a character. Um, darling, for you, I know there's a motherly link trying to come through as I'm talking to you. And all she's talking to me about is I want to make things better. I want to make things better, okay? Um, you really are the sort mm-hmm. of person that suffers in silence. And I mean that very respectfully for mm-hmm. you, okay? You don't, okay, you don't air your laundry in public, all right. Yeah. And especially with the size of it, she says. OK, so she's talking about your underwear there, love, and having a bit of fun with you. All right. But, she's having, but, she's I, know, but I know with her, darling, hers, I, pardon me, I say this, her knickers were bigger than yours. OK. Um, and and that was just the way that she was as a person. But I want to say this yeah. lady, she had a heart of gold, my darling, as I talked to her. She loved everybody and anybody. And I want to come and kiss you on the forehead from her because she's saying to me, oh, I have missed you with all my heart, okay? 
Now, oh. darling, you must have either sat and held her hand or she's talking about you holding her hand towards the end, okay? Yeah. Because she felt mm -hmm. every moment of this. Now, sorry how I say this. People were either telling you that she'd already gone and that she wasn't aware, but she says, I was fully aware of what was happening, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, and I'm not telling you this from a medium's perspective, this is from a, a scientific perspective. The yeah. last thing to go is hearing, okay? Yeah. The last thing to go is hearing. And that's yeah. why I want to say this to you, okay? Um, <clears throat> as I talk to her, you understand that she would have wanted to talk to a sister link before she went to the spirit world, okay? Yeah. Um, and pardon how I say this, my darling. <clears throat> I want to give a lot of thanks to my sister, but I also want to give her an apology, okay? Because I feel at times I would have either, and I, I'm going to say this how she's telling me, she would have either taken advantage of her or she would have almost expected too much of her, okay? Yeah. Um, and I feel as though she would have done a lot of running. It's almost like I want to say to you, I'm sorry for running you around, that sort of feeling, okay? Yeah. Um, now, as I talk, um, okay. As I talk, my darling, I need to give you February. I keep seeing February as being a significant month. And I always say birthday or anniversary month, okay? Um, yeah. February, February, February. Um, September's coming to mind as well as I talk to you about this, okay? September would be a birthday month, okay, um, as I talk about this. Um, there's a gentleman trying to come in for me, darling, and all he said to me is he knew he was taken away in an ambulance because he can hear the blue lights flashing, okay, or he can hear the sirens going. Yeah. Um, and I know with him, my darling, I want to say either he'd passed on route, my darling, or he passed just as they got there. Yeah. Do you understand that, okay? Yeah. Because yeah. he's telling me I've got to tell you this at the moment, okay? Um, I need to give you a Jim connection or a James connection as well, my love, in the spirit yeah. world, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and I want to give you, um, okay, I, I want to give you, I think it's a Wilf or a Wilfred link. Wilf, or, it's not Will, I need to say that. It's not yeah. Will, okay? So I either want a Wilf with an F, okay, or a Wilfred, okay? because I can hear it being shouted to me as I'm talking at the moment, okay? Um, right. And would you understand, I've got to give you this, this sounds really bizarre, would you understand somebody who would have been called Minnie? Minnie? Mm, I'm not too sure. I keep hearing the name of Minnie, you know, and I want to say like Minnie Mouse, okay, but I don't mean Minnie Mouse. I want to give you the name Minnie as though this would have been somebody's name, okay? Minnie, okay? because I want to write it down as I'm talking to you at the moment, okay? Um, and I'm going to give you an and connection there as well in the spirit world. Right. Okay. All right? Um, yeah. Feel as though with you. Are you looking to make uh, – sorry, I need to rephrase that. I feel as though we're looking to make a decision on either a home move or a house move situation close to me at the moment. If it's not you, it's got to be close. Um, it's got to be a home, home location. Did think about it, but I do know someone is it, is it, that's going to be is moving. It, is it close? It's got to be close to me. Yeah. All right, because there's a conversation that's taking place here. And I want to also say to you, <clears throat> you would understand why I want um, to talk about somebody's legs, my darling, with ulcers on, um, and there would have been an iodine compress placed on their legs. A lady in the spirit world for me, my darling. I want to look on mother's side here, okay? Um, because I know that I've got problems like ulcers on my legs and it would have been like a, an iodine sort of compress that was placed on them. No, I don't know who that okay. was. Okay, all right. Chuck it back mm. to me then, okay? I, yeah. I don't take them back. I never believe in doing that. So I always believe that they're there for a reason, okay? Yeah. But with you, the message I want to give to you, my darling, is move forward, go forward with pride. And understand that this lady, my God, darling, she loved you with every bit of her heart, okay? Yeah. And she, that's Thank all she... And, and I told you what she said to me. She wants to kiss you on the forehead. Oh, bless her. All right, my darling. You <laughs> yeah, must have you must, you must have her, her eyes, okay? Because I'm drawn very much to your eyes. Yeah, you, you have do. very You have very deep soul eyes. You're the sort of person you will... This sounds really harsh, what I'm going to say, but you will look at somebody and weigh them up first before you'll talk to yes. them. Yes. Yeah, All right. I do. Because what she's saying to <laughs> I'm me not about judging, but I do, yeah. I do do that. <laughs> That's all right. What she's saying to me is, you will see truth in people's eyes. 
Okay, mm. my darling. Is that right for you, Karen? Yeah, that's lovely. You're very Thank welcome. You very Apologies much. if we lost a couple of links there, but I want you to take them with you. I want to look for Minnie. I want you to look for yes. Anne. And I want you to look for this lady who had ulcers on her legs. And if you find them, I want you to email me. I will do. All right, my yes, sweetheart. Definitely. You're very yes. welcome. Thank you very much. Take care, Thank love. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you so much, Karen. We will Thank you, speak to you later. Bye -bye. We'll take you off now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Right, that was brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, we've got a question from Parachasers UK. He says you were looking down and writing or reading. Can you tell us exactly how your, your process of um, reading some, for, for somebody? Yeah, of course I can. Yeah, I mean, the way, um, the way that <laughs> it sounds quite weird, but the way that I work, I always have a piece of paper next to me and I doodle. OK, and I always have. Um, and it's the way it helps me when I work with police or I'm working on police cases. I always have a, a sheet of A4 and, and as they're talking, I'll be writing away or whatever and I'll be doodling or whatever. And then I always send it to them or hold it up um, and they'll go, how did you know that? And I go, I don't know, just information that I've just been fed. And even to the point where um, with certain police forces, I've helped to find sort of locations of, of items, evidence items, purely just by doodling on a piece of paper and telling them to go down a track or to find this track yeah. and to go to this shed or something like that. And it's just how the spirit world work with me. You know, they, it's, it's bizarre because it'll change with every reading. You know, it depends. I would say it depends which spirit I'm working with because so, some spirits are more vocal. Some will get you more active. So they'll get you seeing things. They'll get you drawing things, writing things. But it depends on the circumstances. Obviously, if I'm on a stage or platform, it's very hard to stand there drawing away and doodling away. Yeah. But I suppose it just helps me connect. You know, it just helps me link in with the spirit world. So I do whatever's necessary, really. Yeah, I've seen yeah. Tyler Henry using the same um, method yeah. on TV when he's speaking to totally. celebrities and he's got a whole notepad, hasn't he? And he just flicks pages yeah. and pages. And it's, do you know, the, the thing is what people have to remember is as a medium, you are keeping up a two-way conversation here. Yeah. You know, it's it's... It's quite clever in a way, because as much as I'm giving a message, I'm already having a conversation about the next message with them upstairs. And you've got to be really, really quick. And, and naturally for me, and it's, it's not easy, I automatically speed up when I start working. I always say to people, look, you've got to tell me to slow down. If I'm talking too quick, tell me to slow down. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where sometimes I have a problem overseas, because naturally the UK people, you know, us Brits, we talk very quickly anyway compared to some yeah. other continents. Um, and it's hard for me if I end up with a translator, like a lot of the time I do in Europe, especially in Germany. Um, if I end up with a translator, I almost get them waving at me to go, just steady on a minute. You're talking, <laughs> you're talking faster than what we can translate, you know. And I almost, I almost have the vision of this little deer stood next to me with steam coming out of her arms, you know. Um, but I think, again, it depends how the spirit world connects. You know, once I get a connection, you've got to remember that if this is the first time that somebody's mother's come through, the amount of information that that lady's going to want to get through to her daughter, her son, you know, it's, it's phenomenal. And I've got to somehow keep up with that. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Uh, someone in chat asked if we could see your notes. Do you show them or do you not show them? Yeah, you can do, yeah. Not a problem. There you go, look. Little things that you'll see. So September birthday, even yeah. to the point of the eyes, look. Don't, that's an eyes and nose at the bottom, all right? Legs. But that's what I do. So that's, that's all I do. I just doodle. It doesn't mean anything at all. But they yeah. are things that are given to me. So I've got <clears> the name of Minnie. I've got Jim. I've got Wilf, Wilfred, Anne, February. Ka uh, I've got um, obviously Karen's name because she told me Karen. But September birthday, Autumn, Dorothy, Dot. Yeah, so that's, that's fantastic. So welcome. going back to, to, to Paranormal Chasers, because he's, mm. he's sceptical, which is fine. We've got no issue with that whatsoever. And asking questions is always the best way. Um, he was he was talking about going back to me putting the post up and having names visible yep. for people saying, you know, I want to read it. It could have been done a different way. I should have, in hindsight, said put them just directly into, into our messenger. But it didn't work that way. We can only say from our knowledge that Barry didn't know anything. Yeah. Um, he's a shorter. <laughs> we know it, Barry doesn't know anything. It's, it's impossible. I mean, we, we get it a lot with events when people are paying on credit cards, things like that, and they'll go, oh, well, you're going to follow our information. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. if I've got an audience of 500 people, do people think I've really got time to delve into everybody's yeah. card details? And he's with, you know, 
Penny's just messaged me and said you may want to mention, and she's given me a lot of personal information. I'm not going to read it out now, but it's all yeah. things you touched on that you wouldn't have known, like her youngest no, and, son's birthday and things yeah, like and, that. and you know, even though I know Penny, you know, I know Penny, you know, there's always things that people don't know about each other. You know, there's we all we all have we all have a hidden side. I don't care what people say, we all have a hidden side. And I think that's for us what we've got to try and delve into. And I have no problem, you know, if somebody's a, a skeptic. I always describe myself as a skeptical medium because I still look for proof. Even to this day, I still look for proof. And I won't just walk in a building and go, yeah, everything's paranormal. If I think it isn't, I will honestly say. Yeah, yeah. Um... Barry, do you see images or hear words? <clears throat> yeah, all the time, okay. Ever since being a child, my first connection with the spirit world was they used to come outside, they used to stand outside the window, and I almost used to see things as like falling shapes falling down outside, and then they started to build that up, and then they used to stand outside and wave at me or, or almost get me to acknowledge them, to go, look, we're here, you know, we're here, we're visiting. And then that over time, when I began to, I'll say build trust with them, they then started to come closer and actually come inside my home and start to visit me a little bit closer, even to the point where, you know, I had to have a bit of a pact with them or a bit of a rule that said, you know what, guys, you don't come into my bedroom because that is my rest space. And if I can't rest, I can't mm -hmm. work, you know. And But on the other hand, I have to say, you know, I've had some amazing times when I've been absolutely tired out because I, I do so much that I've done a demonstration and thought, actually, you know what, this is just phenomenal. This is the best reading I've ever done, <clears throat> you know, but that again is an individual thing, really. Yeah, definitely. So I've just asked people, asked people to post their questions for you now, um, if they have any questions for you. Uh, we will take one or two people, perhaps. Uh, Paranormal Chasers, I'm not exactly sure who you are, but perhaps you would like to have a short reading. That would be the one that I would pick if you're still here. Um, that would be interesting. Perhaps your partner, um, who something nobody knows. I mean, that that would be the bread on the the butter, the bread on the butter. <laughs> I think it, I yeah, think it's, it's a very hard one, thing. isn't it? Because I think if somebody's if somebody's gone down that mind view of I don't believe anyway, no mm. matter what you'll give, won't make any difference. You know, I, I've been there numerous times with people where you know you could tell them something that was that they knew was true, and they'd turn around and go, No, nah, it's not. It's not. You've just made that up. Yeah. No, I so I, I, unfortunately, I have to say I don't play to people. I have no need to because I've done this for so long. Yeah. You know, I have numerous yeah. people who could turn around and go, I've had a reading with Barry, and actually, you know what, I loved every minute of it. Yeah. I plan on getting one done at some point in the future. Um, <laughs> yeah, same. Soul Seeker, Soul Seeker says, um, sorry, my sight's really bad. Can, can it, you touch it, devices and feel people's pain? Right, as okay. As in what, I'm assuming, yeah, I was just going to say, I'm assuming you mean psychometry. Yeah, I do psychometry. Again, psychometry is very different. Remember this, though, to mediumship, because what you're doing on a psychic level is you're linking in in a different way. Um, and what you're actually doing is using the person's energy. So you're more of a one-to-one a -one individual reading rather than a spiritual reading or a, or a mediumship reading. So you've just got to be mindful of that. Even though spirit will connect you could end up almost just going down the, the psychic link of the individual that you're reading for rather than a spirit connection. Yeah, sure. All um, right. Somebody, oh, I don't, don't think we'll ask that. I don't, I just, I think that's a really touchy subject to go to um, about helping the police on a certain case. Um, again, you know, well, one of the things I will say is I've, um, somebody has mentioned about the Moore's murder cases. Yes, I did some work on the Moore's murder cases, um, looking for um, certain, certain um, individuals, let's say, Keith Bennett being one of them. Um, and I did a lot of work. And, I, and I'm going to say now, I did all that work for free. I never charged a penny for that because I never do for any of my police work. And that's the way that I work. Um, and I was up on the Moors. I went up onto the Moors with the cadaver dogs. Um, I was up there on my own with with just one or two people with me, you know, not directing me in any way. Um, we got given a lot of information afterwards about um, trophy photographs. So basically where certain evidence had been found or where certain items had been found. 
Um, and a lot of them we found that I'd almost, you know, led people to them without knowing it, okay? Um, and I'm going to say something else on that as well with the Moors murders. Um, I did an event at Hyde Town Hall many years ago, and it was one of the last places where Myra, Hind Myra Hindley was held, and also one of the last bodies was um, identified in the morgue there. Um, and we always said we had her coming through on a Ouija board, actually. And as, we, as she came through in the dressing room, or the energy came through in the dressing room, the door actually slammed and smashed all the glass. That's that's incredible. Yeah. Um, the that pro the problem you have there as well is that there's been a load of bad paranormal publicity about those cases as well. Um, it's, it's very it's very hard because we're getting asked to do a lot of police cases, but some of them on a a personal basis I have to refuse because I have my own views of them. If that makes sense. And sometimes I'm not sure those views are what public want to hear. You know, certainly if I've got a doubt about what has happened on a truthful basis, and I would sooner just go, no, my gut feelings to stay away from this. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's, it's well, it's as damaging as it is can be helpful. Yeah. Sometimes. Somebody's so, somebody's just asked, was that with permission from the family, Barry? Yes, it was full permission. Okay, um, we had Winnie up there with us, who was Keith Bennett's mum. She, she was a very spiritual lady, as in yeah. she believed in the spirit world. I guess not only just because that could be her belief, but there would be some type of um, want of belief in that, just to know that her son goes on. I think it's a very hard situation, you know, with anybody. And, I mean, let's be honest, you know, especially when somebody's been taken through a murder situation where you want to track down your loved one. And, and unfortunately for Winnie, and, and hand on heart for her, you know, unfortunately, she never found a son. Um, and I think that's the worst thing for any mother. Any Losing a child and not being able to find them, it must be the most heartbreaking thing in the world. I don't think I could even comprehend that no, at all. No. I mean, I worry when my kids go out and they're like 22, 20 and 18, and I'm still, mm. you know, I'm still a bag of bones, yeah. especially if they're going out at night. Yeah, but, totally. Yeah, that's, that's just the way it goes. Um, where can people find you on... Um, social media social, social media if you want to find us on social media you can find us on facebook you can find us <coughs> under barry john international psychic medium um, you can find us on our website which is www.barryjohn.com um, by all means please feel free to drop me any messages you know i can promise you we will get back to you but please give me some time limit on it don't expect to send me one tonight and get a response instantly mm -hmm. um, you know we uh, i do have <coughs> businesses that i run but you know, I always try and make as much time to answer people and, and be respectful with them as well. Yeah, sure. I think we're going to leave that last question because... That's all right. It's a whole huge thing. Um, Laurie, and I don't think we're going to go into that one. Um, okay. But there is one one last question. I do apologise whoever that was, but I just think it's getting too specific and we don't want to upset anybody that may be watching, may, may watch in the future. Um, total respect to the families. Um, I just have another question. Who is the spirit in my doll? I already know, just want to see what he says. That's a very specific <laughs> question, uh, Sandy, which probably can't be answered, especially without seeing the doll without time. I don't know. It, it, you're absolutely right. I mean, again, it goes back to that where people send us a lot of photographs and go, oh, can you tell me if this place is haunted? Well, I've got to be there at the time, really, to feel it and to sense it, you know, and, and you know, this isn't really where my expertise lies. You know, I want to say I'm a medium at the end of the day and being a medium means I communicate with the other side to bring messages of comfort and release. Um, you know, not really communicating with a doll. Sorry, guys. No I'm being honest there. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. Um, and Karen, who was in just now, asked if you uh, get, if you meditate before readings and if you get the spirit come through in the meditation. Okay. One thing I, I don't necessarily always believe in is meditation because I think meditation lowers the vibration too much. I think if the spirit world are there, they're there 24 hours a day. Um, I can very quickly turn it on and turn it off. And, and do I ever disconnect? No, I don't. Because I think sometimes, you know, for me, the way that they work, and they know how I work because they work with me for so long, they just know that if I'm busy, I'll just go, I'll ignore it. I'll just ignore you, okay? And and that's me. I'm an Aries at the end of the day, you know, and uh, the spirit world must frustrate them to death <laughs> knowing that I'm an Aries. But I think you've just got to be able to um, be very sensible with it. I think you've got to remember it can't control your life. You know, somebody else's emotions and feelings <laughs> aren't my emotions and feelings. 
And the one thing I always do is when somebody leaves or, or, or has had a reading with me, I disconnect in my own way. And that means I cut the ties, cut the cords and go, actually, that's your emotions, not my emotions right. taken with you. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Thoughts on astral projection? Again, astral, astral projection, totally believe in it. I believe that we all have an element of astral travel around us at times. Um, you know, we talk about it in many, many circumstances. Sometimes you can get the sensation of falling where you could say you're falling back into the body in some sort of way. Um, I have a major fascination about people who have had near-death experiences where they've seen themselves on an operating table and where they've been sent back. Um, for me as a child, um, and I'm probably going back to what being maybe six, seven years of age, I got hit by lightning um, and it actually spun me around so much that my gran wondered what was going off. And you know what? I'm still here to survive it and to, wow. to see the day. So maybe that was the spirit <laughs> world testing me in some way. You know, maybe maybe yeah. I did hit the crossover point and they said, we don't want him yet. And I don't, tr don't, I don't blame them for not wanting me yet as well. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. Send him back. Yeah. <laughs> Send him back. Keep him incredible. there. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. Right. Do you want to take one more reading? Of course I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want yeah. to just you just want to throw somebody at me? Okay. Well, Lunar Eclipse was the first person to ask. I think I, don't know if I missed anybody. There's this lady. Let's, let's go with Lunar Eclipse then. Lovely. Okay. Let's have a look with you. All right, Lunar. I want to say with you, my darling. Yeah, you know what? what? Energy, energy around you is tremendous. Okay. There is a lot of contact coming through from the spirit world, and this isn't the first time you've had presence. Okay. Now I know you put there. My mum was an Aries, so I'm presuming you're saying your mum's gone. Okay. So I'm going to ignore that fact straight away. Okay. But I want to say to you. As I talk about this, the spirit world around you have really woken you up or are awakening you up a little bit, okay, as we talk about this. Um, I need to say to you, my love, as I talk about this, the second of the month should be very specific. So I want to say the second of April must be very specific because I keep seeing it as I'm talking to you at the moment. Now, I know with you, at times again, you know, you really do try to put on a little bit of a brave face without upsetting people. So I want to say, Sometimes you're better off to speak out and to say what you feel and go with it. Um, as I talk to you, um, it's very difficult because I know you've said your mum's in the spirit world now. Um, I want to say to you, the lady that does come through, darling, must have passed with either a cancer or a tumorous condition. What I'm talking of is a, is a long-term illness there, okay, terminal illness. Um, but I want to say to you, the pain and relief on her face was two totally different things, okay? Once she'd gone, the release... And the relief was something totally different. And that's what she wants you to remember her by, is that release of the pain, okay, or relieving the pain for her as she talks to me about this. Um, don't know why she talks to me about the, the five in the family. So there's got to be either be five children or five grandchildren that I talk about, because she talks about the number five over and over again. Um, I know with her that she would have either ignored signs of being unwell or ignored signs of... Um, Knowing that there was a problem, let me say that to you, okay? Um, she talks to me about February. She talks to me again as well. Um, and I want to give you, um, okay, very bizarrely, I want to give you Robinson's jam, okay? Robinson's jam, but it had to be a certain kind of jam for me, okay? Um, I'm going to give you that with all my love, my darling. I think you've really got a lot of spirit world waiting for you to connect. If you're not developing, you need to, all right? And I'm going to leave it with that one. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. Thank you. You're very Thank welcome. You. We'll end the readings there. We've kind of covered a lot in the hour. Um, is there anything you want to add, Barry? No, I think at the end of the day, you know, for me, it's, as we said at the beginning, I think where I can support anybody, I will gladly do it. And I always have done over the years. You know, it's not... It's not all about take, take, take. I do a lot of charity work and I always have, have as well behind the scenes. Um, and as I said, helping people with certain circumstances and situations isn't easy. And, you know, if it isn't easy for them, think it, how easy it isn't for me, you know, how hard it can be for me that mm -hmm. I'm getting involved in somebody's emotions that really does at times bring you down if you're not careful. You've got to know when to cut that cord and cut that line. Yeah, that, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Luna, right, um, let us know if you, if, if you have any feedback for uh, yeah. Barry before we go. Um, one last question for you from me. All right, my darling. And that is, when you go into a location and there is a spirit there and it's a well-done location, what does the spirit say? <laughs> <laughs> I am done know, with it. 
but it's very true. <laughs> you know, we find this constantly, and I think certain venues have been done over and over and over again. Okay, um, and I think what happens is they probably get fed up of us. I won't say that they get fed up of us, as if to say, for God's sake, they're here again. Okay, and it's almost <laughs> like you know, you got to remember, you know, when we're in, a, when we're on an investigation, and I've seen this numerous times with people. They expect spirit to act, okay? Uh -huh. You've got to do it now. Do it now. Do it now because I ask you to. And I always say to them, remember that these were once living people. You know, they were people that touched this earth plane in whatever aspect they did. Have an element of respect for them, okay? Uh -huh. I don't stand there screaming and shouting and, and swearing at the spirit world. I don't think there's any need to. I think if they want to make something happen, they will. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, if someone was like goading my gran, who I was really close to, you know, and they were like, do it now, do your best, do your worst, you're not there, you're not real, I'd probably knock them out, to be fair. <laughs> and I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. You know, it's a little bit Most like the course, toffee, yeah. toffee, toffee Crisp advert, isn't it? You'd love to see one just come down from the ceiling and just go, we're too busy for you at the moment. All mm -hmm. right. Um, and you know what? All I say to people is, God help you all when I'm over the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You're I welcome. think we're going to end it there. There is a message there from Lena. She says, Thank you. Uh, I am, yes, I do hear and see. Uh, yes, my mother passed with cancer of lung. Um, she did have the face of relief. I miss her every day, but she is pain free. And that's the most important thing. She's probably very happy. She's still with you and she's still yeah. looking. And she's probably still holding your hand when you need it. And um, that's worth something to remember is that whether you believe or whether you don't, for us that do believe, they're always a step away and they're always a thought away. And that's the most important thing. Spirit and no more than a thought away. So I was going to finish off with a reading. Then. I was going to say, take it with you and I'll send you off for love. But we won't. <laughs> <laughs> that's your life. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, from me, guys, thank you so, so much, you know, and I'm, I'll always, always support anybody that I can. If ever you want me back on, just get in touch with us. Let's sort something out. Oh, yeah. um, and same if anybody's got any questions, get in touch with me. Best thing is on social media, you know, look on Facebook, look for Barry John International Psychic Medium, pop me a message. Um, and I will come back to you, okay? But all I'm going to say is please don't pop me messages for free readings and expect me to give you a full reading. Mm, yeah, no. I mean, right. you don't ask to come into your house to do your water wax and then expect exactly. them to do it. It's, it's exactly. a service at the end of the day. So, thank you very much That's to everyone awesome. in chat. You've been incredible. Thank you to the skeptics. Thank you to the believers and everyone in between. It's been amazing. Um, the question's been amazing. Barry, you've been phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Oh. I've really enjoyed this evening. Um, Lorian, you've done an amazing job of chat again, and our mods have done an amazing job. Thank you so much, everyone. And we are back next week with. Come on. Neil Packer from the Antique Centre. Oh, um, lovely guy. Yeah, top guy. And we also have the lovely uh, Richard Felix on Wednesday as well. So it's Monday and Wednesday next week. Double so, well, so it's going to be a really good week. And uh, we will see you all soon. Don't forget to check Barry's links in the description. Uh, check out his pages. Contact him for a reading um, because this guy is phenomenal. And uh, we will see you all next week. Bye. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. Bye.